Let's look at uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 through verse 16. And, and the word of the Lord it says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. I want to talk about the power of your confession. I'd like for us to look at Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 in a little different translation. And you'll probably see the word, instead of profession, you'll see the word uh, confession. Uh, we have a great high priest. Let us firmly hold to the faith that we profess. Some translation says, hold fast to your confession. And uh, what are we to confess? We're to confess the word of God. You notice the reading of this. We have a great high priest. We know who the high priest is, don't we? It's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He says um, he is touched by our, our troubles, our infirmities. Whatever's troubling you, he's touched by it. And he, the Bible says over and over again, when Jesus was confronted with people who had problems, that he was moved with compassion toward the needs of people. And, you know, we have the spirit of Jesus Christ. We need to be moved with compassion toward people who are in need. Amen. So it says, He was tempted in all points we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore, the word therefore, as one preacher said, when you see the word therefore, you need to find out what it's there for. So therefore, therefore, uh, we can come boldly before the throne of grace. We, can, we, we don't have to go timidly. We can come boldly before the throne of grace. Why? Not that we're without sin, but because He is without sin. We can come boldly to the throne of grace and find help in the time of need. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, we, we don't excuse sin or, or, or condone sin, but at the same time, it's not dependent upon us. In the Old Testament, under law, it was about you. It was about you and me. Thou shall not. You shall not. You shall not. Over and over again, thou shall not. It was, it was all about us in the Old Testament. You, you've got to do this. You can't do that. But now in the New Testament, it's all about Jesus, what he has done. Since Jesus is without sin, we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Amen. I'm glad it doesn't say uh, you're without sin because we, that would keep us all out, wouldn't it? Right. But because he is without sin, we can come boldly to the throne of grace. And, you know, the enemy, uh, he, he likes to put the attention back on us. Uh, and, you know, when you have a need, or maybe you're sick in your body and you need to be healed. And, and the enemy's there to say, well, you're not worthy. You know you haven't prayed enough or you've done this or you haven't done that. And he's putting the attention upon you. But we want to put the attention where it belongs. Jesus overcame all things. He was tempered in all points. Therefore, we can receive what we need. We can receive help in the time of need for all of these things that we have. We can come boldly. Praise God. So we have to hold fast to our confession, who we are, what we are, and what the Scripture says about us. Medical research has discovered that the brain, which controls the part of the brain that controls the speech, is connected to every cell, every nerve of your body. So it's important what we say. There's a, the words that we speak about ourselves can affect our health. It can affect everything around us. Because remember, the nerves from the speech connects to every part of your body. So when we confess things, we, we must confess the right thing. Well, everybody's getting the flu. I guess I'll be next. No, no, that's the wrong confession. I'm going to be healed by the power of God. I'm going to walk in health. God wants me to prosper me in health even as my soul prospers. Right. Everybody's getting laid off. I guess I'll be next. No. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Right. Amen. So we want the attention upon, upon Jesus, what he's done for us. God blesses us not because we're good, but he blesses us because Jesus is good. Right. And he blesses us so we can be good. Amen. 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 Glory to God. So uh, I'm glad it doesn't say you, you, when you get good enough, God will bless you. But he blesses us in order that we can be what he wants us, what he wants us to be. 
What you speak is so important. When you speak the Word of God, is power. Experimentation has been done by science, scientists over a glass of water, speaking harshly. Under a microscope, the water becomes troubled, the glass of water. But speaking softly, the water becomes melodious in its movement and harmonious. Also under plants. You know, some people talk to their plants. Well, maybe, maybe that's not such a bad idea. They've, they put plants under microscopes. When you speak harshly over a plant, it, it becomes trouble. <clears throat> but when you, when you speak over a plant, uh, soft, soothing tones, well then, you know, it's, it reacts positively. And the same way with our life, the same way with our body, the same way with our walk with God, when we make the right confession... We confess the right thing, then things will be a whole lot better for us. Amen. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of what? Out of thy mouth. We're to speak the word of God. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. When? When we have the word of God in our mouth. And we live according to the Word of God. The Jewish people, and I love to do this myself, and I know I've mentioned it before, the Jewish people had a custom of reading the Bible out loud. And I like to do that in my, in my private time with the Lord. That's why when Philip, in, in the 8th chapter of the book of Acts, when he went up beside that Ethiopian who was a proselyte to the Jewish faith, that he heard, he knew what the man was reading because he was reading according to Jewish custom. He was reading out loud. So, there's something about so powerful about what we say and what we speak. <clears throat> the Bible speaks about Job 5.21. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of the destruction when it cometh. A lot in the scripture said about what you say, what you speak. Psalms 52 verse 2. The, def the tongue devises, devises mischief. Like a sharp razor working deceitfully. You ever, you, you know, you heard the expression, a sharp tongue? Well, he's got a sharp tongue, she's got a sharp tongue. Well, there's some people have a sharp tongue, don't they? They speak the wrong thing. Psalms 57, verse 4. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue like a sharp sword. Over and over again, the Bible speaks about what you say and how you say. John, James chapter 3, verse 5 through verse 8. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, a great a matter, a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body and setteth on, the, on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things of the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Amen. We don't want to be full of deadly poison, do we? Speak deadly poison. We don't want to speak uh, slander. We don't want to speak accusation. We don't want to speak uh, against people. We want to speak for them. You know, there's two ministries going on in the world. The ministry of Jesus Christ which is a ministry of intercession. The Bible said Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. You want to be in the ministry of Jesus? Well, you make intercession for people. There's the ministry of the devil. What is it? The devil is accusation, the ministry of accusation. The word devil means the accuser. When you hear people gossiping, they're in the devil's ministry. They're doing the devil's work, the devil's ministry. When you're people involved in slander, when you people hear people cutting others down, Talking about them. They're in the devil's ministry. <laughs> they may, be, they may uh, be born again and come to church and read the Bible and, and all of that. But when we speak evil of our brothers and sisters, we're in the devil's ministry. Let's be in the ministry of intercession. The ministry of Jesus Christ. Amen. He lives to make intercession for us. James 1.26 if any man among you seem to be religious and brighteth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. Wow. If we're gossiping and involved in scandal and criticizing and backbiting, amen. The Bible talks about how that we're deceived. 
<laughs> Our religion is in vain. Wow, that's, a, that's something to consider then. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of what? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I remember when I was about, uh, oh, 28 years old, I, I was stricken with an affliction. And I saw uh, a friend of mine who had undergone cancer surgery. And uh, I said, and he died later on. And uh, so I said, Curtis, uh, how did you know you had cancer? He said, turn around. He said, I got a sore spot right here. And he put his finger right where I had a sore spot. Oh, I've got cancer. I thought, oh, man. <laughs> so uh, I became the insurance salesman's best friend. Give me 100000 of this. I don't want my wife to have to raise at that time with three kids. I don't want to. Um, hundred thousand may not be enough. That's back in the seventies. That's quite a bit of money. I better get another hundred thousand dollars. I better get another fifty thousand dollar policy. You know, because uh, and I was thinking death. And then one time, somebody turned me on to some faith teaching and faith preaching, and and so I began to confess healing and confess faith. So I made a statement: <clears throat> I'm not going to die, young man. I'm going to live to be old. <laughs> and we're back there. And I'm still working. And one of these days, I'm going to be old. Amen. <laughs> I plan on getting there. <laughs> so death and life and the power of the tongue. So we begin to confess these things. Uh, an assist, assistant pastor once, it, he, he got hurt on the job. And his, he, his finger was cut very severely. And he came up to the service one night. And he said, I want you to pray for me. He said, I've injured my finger. And he said, the devil told me I was going to lose my finger. And I said, who told you? He said, the devil told me. I said, who told you? He looked at me like, are you hard of hearing? And which I am now. But he, he said, the devil. Oh, the devil is a liar. I said, that's right. If the devil told you something, you depend on just the opposite. He still got his finger. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So death and life are in the power of the tongue. Ephesians 4, 29 and 30. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good of the use of edifying does it edify next time we hear people being discussed you know <laughs> so in a, in a negative, hey, hey does this edify does this build anybody up does it encourage people so we want to speak to edifying they may minister grace to the hearers and grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby we're sealed in the day of redemption so what we say can grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And there's been, I remember several years ago, Clinton was, in pres was the president then, and uh, <clears throat> he had his personal problems, and preachers made jokes about it. And one preacher, he told a joke about the president, and I laughed, and the Holy Spirit convicted me. He said, you need to pray for him. It's not a laughing matter. It's not a joke. Pray for him. So I, I began to pray for him. And I quit laughing at those kind of things. Because it grieves the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible says don't speak evil of, of, your, of your leaders. Or thought. It's hard to speak against their policies. But to speak evil of them is not a good thing. Amen. Okay, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. How was the world created? God spoke. Seven times in Genesis 1, God spoke, and a miracle of creation took place. The only part of God's creation that has the fingerprint of God is you and me, the human being. Everything else he spoke. He spoke to the waters, and fish began to swim in the ocean, in the waters. And birds flew up out of the waters. He spoke to the land and cows and lions and camels and dogs and cats came up out of the earth. And he said, let us make man in our own image. But then the act of creation, God scooped out dirt. And so we're the only part. Man is the only one that has the fingerprint of God upon him because that's the crowning point of God's creation. But he spoke. God, how did he create? He spoke. We also create when we speak. We create an atmosphere of, of faith, or we can speak an atmosphere of doubt. We can speak an atmosphere of, of things positive, things are good, or we can speak and create an atmosphere of negativity. 
we can speak into our children, our grandchildren, negative things. And, and we can see negative things in our life. There's times for correction. But we must speak positive things. I see my grandchildren. I tell them, you're going to do great things for the Lord. You're going to do wonderful things. God's got his hand on you. Speak, speak things into their life. Speak faith into their life. Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6, he said he was a man of unclean lips. Notice what he said. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which had taken with the tongues from off the altar, and laid it where? Laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this has touched what? Thy lips. Thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Where does the baptism of the Holy Ghost first touch us? The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. So, you see, God starts, the anointing starts with how we speak, what we speak. We speak the wonderful praises of God. And so from then on, God wants us to speak faith. He, he, he wants us to not to be involved in negativity and doubt and unbelief and negative things. Right. Amen. People love to talk about, you know, you know how negative people are. Well, if it, you know, if it's hot, well, it's, man, it's hot. Man, it's cold, it's too cold. We need a rain. If it rains, I wish this rain would stop, you know. People are always negative, you know. <laughs> They like to complain, don't they? When I find people like that, I just like to say the opposite. Well, I'm, I'm thankful, you know, that we, we got some warm weather. You know, we'll enjoy that. We'll appreciate this next winter. Amen. Second Corinthians 4, 13. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I done what? I have spoken. We also believe and do what? Therefore speak. Amen. We speak what we believe. We speak what we believe in. <clears throat> Y'all forgive me. Don't charge this to the pastor, but I got to tell you something. <clears throat> we, I used to, there used to be a Christian bookstore in town. <clears throat> and uh, I'd go in there pretty often. Businessmen hung out and, you know, a lot of people. People were called charismatic. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say this. <laughs> And I said, you know what the difference between traditional Pentecostals and the Charismatics are? Charismatics talk about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Traditional Pentecostals talk about one another. Ooh. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> but that's, that's, sometimes I'm afraid it might be true, you know. <laughs> I love to see people that love Jesus so much they want to talk about him. They want to praise him. They get exuberant in their praise. Hallelujah. But sister, your, your, your praise is so inspiring. And your mother, amen. So, so exuberant in their praise. Yes, amen. I, I love to see that. It inspires me. Yes, amen. Just get lost. I, I remember we went to a conference one time. And I had to get there early because I was serving on some kind of committee. It was in Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, so we got there the weekend before. We went to a uh, a, a new church. It was a home mission church, and uh, right in the middle of Mormon country, you know, Salt Lake City. And it already had growth. I mean, he had, I don't remember how many people there. Maybe sixty, maybe a hundred, even. I can't remember. But the thing about it was, the pastor. I was so impressed with him. When he got up there, he was just he would just worship the Lord and praise the Lord, and it made me want to praise the Lord. Amen. So when I see these folks up here singing. And they're getting touched and praising the Lord. You know what it makes me? It makes me want to praise the Lord. That's why we call them praise leaders. Amen. Praise team. Praise leaders. Because it inspires praise in us. Amen. Okay. Um, John 6, 63. Jesus said, It is a spirit that quickeneth or giveth the life. That's the King James word for give, gives life. It's a spirit that gives life. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Right. 
This word is alive. It's the living word of God. When we speak the word of God, we speak life. Amen. What does the word say? What does the scripture say? We, we, uh, we watch a lot of Christian programming. And one of our favorite <clears throat> is uh, Sid Roth, a Messianic Jew. And uh, he, had a, he had a man on his uh, program one time. And he had an 80 to 90% success rate of people of hitting people off of drugs and alcohol. Whereas the secular method is only a, a 10% uh, success rate in getting people free permanently from those things. So Sid Roth asked him what, what was his secret. He said, I have the people, I have the people who are addicted. I have them to read the word out loud, and I have them to pray what they read. Pray the word. You know, I love to pray the word of God. What does the word say? You, you can just pray, pray almost any scripture, you know. I mean, when you're reading the scripture, it says, and multitudes follow Jesus. I say, oh, Lord, I want to see multitudes follow you again. Amen. It speaks about uh, who shall abide in his presence. He hath clean hands and a pure heart. Lord, give me clean hands and a pure heart. Motives that are right. Actions that are right. Amen. Numbers 13, verse 32, verse 33. The ten spies, they brought up an evil report. They talked about how bad things were. Notice what happened. Of the land which they had searched and the people saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is the land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people we saw were men of great stature. There was, and there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were, notice this last sentence here, praise. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Wow. How do you see yourself? As a grasshopper? Oh, I'm just a little insignificant me. No, you're significant. You're important. You're so important, Jesus shed his blood for you. You're so insignificant that Jesus gave you the Holy Spirit. He redeemed you. I like to think of it like this. If I was the only sinner in all the world that needed to be saved, Jesus would have died for me. If you were the only person in all the world that needed to be saved, Jesus would have died for you. But we all have sinned. He died for all of us. Praise God. So, there's a good chance that how we see ourselves is exactly how the devil sees us. We see ourselves as weaklings, no power. The enemy just run right over you. That's how it, but if you see yourself, you confess, I'm a more than a conqueror through him that loved me. That's what the scripture says. We're more, doesn't the Bible say we're more than conquerors? Yes. Not just a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. We need to confess that. we got a problem, temptation, trials. I can conquer this because I'm more than a conqueror through Him. Amen. Amen. Pray the Word. Speak the Word. I've got a big problem. Oh, it may be financial. It may be sickness. But what does the Word say? Am I going to talk about how, how bad the problem is? That's what the Israel did. That's what a lot of people do. Oh, the economy is bad, man. I don't know what we're going to do. Uh, it's terrible. We're going to lose our job. No, no, no. You, we want to talk. About how good God is. That's right. Amen. He didn't say he'd supply all our needs if the economy was good. He said, my God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. So we need to talk about those things. Psalms 42 verse 11. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Sometimes you've got to talk to yourself, you know. We all talk to myself. i got a friend. And I was teasing about talking to myself. I said, man, I heard you talking to yourself. He, yeah, he said, I, sometimes I like to talk to somebody who's intelligent. <laughs> so the psalmist knew how to talk to himself. Why art thou cast down? Or we might say like, why are you discouraged? David Fuller, why are you discouraged? Why are you depressed? <laughs> know how to talk to yourself. There's no reason I should be depressed. No reason I should be discouraged. Because God... It's with us. God's with us. Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. Know how to talk to yourself. I'm going to hope in God. No matter how bad things get, no matter how hard it gets, I'm going to hope in God. 
For I shall yet praise him. For he is what? He's the health of my countenance and my God. We're told to write his word on our hearts. Proverbs 3, verse 3. Let mercy and truth, verse, uh, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Write truth. Write the word upon your heart. How in the world do you do that? How do you write the word on your heart? The answer is always in the word. Psalms 45 verse 11. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. When you speak, you're writing on your heart. What does your biography look like? Writing on the tables of your heart. When you speak, every time you speak, you're writing something in your heart. You're creating something. You're creating more faith or you're creating doubt. If you're talking about how bad your problems are. You're, you're creating a giant and you're just like those Israelites talked about how big the, the Anakins were. The giants. And they got bigger and bigger in their own eyes. And David, he knew how to look at the giant. He said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. I've got the name of the Lord. So, when we speak, we're writing. That's why it's important to find out what the Word of God says and speak the Word of God. Speak faith. Amen. So we write on hearts by what we say. I may have told this uh, illustration before, but a few years ago, uh, <clears throat> I was preaching up in uh, a Birch Tree, Missouri, southern Missouri, the foothills of the Ozark. There was a couple there that <clears throat> had the, uh, tried to have a baby and they had, I don't remember how many miscarriages she had. She had two or three different miscarriages. And uh, she became pregnant again and, and they said, you're probably going to lose this baby. She said, I, I will not lose my baby. I came through and preached a sermon, not this sermon, similar sermon similar to that. Not knowing the situation that was going on. And the pastor, I didn't know what he had preached the Sunday before, but he had preached almost the same thing I preached when I got there. I didn't know it. He told me later on. Well, the pregnancy reached, it was either 21 or 22 weeks. So they had to get her to St. Louis. It was about 150 miles to St. Louis. They had to get her there quickly. And so the doctor told her, said, there's no way your baby's going to live. 21, 22 weeks, it just doesn't happen. She said, doctor, you get everything my baby's going to need because my baby's going to live. Amen. He's going to live. Well, it, you know, it, I don't want you to get your hopes up because it's impossible. That baby is, cannot survive. It cannot live. It was one of the youngest uh, uh, preemies ever born in that hospital. That, that little guy now, he's, he's, he's about now. He, he was born on my birthday, February 3rd. He's a big, husky, robust guy. I mean, he was first born. He had, they had to have oxygen on him. But this lady, she kept holding on to her profession. My baby's not going to die. My baby's going to live. And I see the fruit of it today. Praise God. She held on to her confession. Matthew 22, uh, verse 12, rather. 12 of Matthew, verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can you be an evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Why do people, why does a lot of people use profanity and talk dirty and filthy? Because that's what's in here. Why do some people always talk about Jesus? Because it's, it's, that's what's in here. Amen. I was on a flight one time, Mark and I were coming back from Jamaica, several other ministers. He was a teenager at that time. And we were uh, flying on the Jamaican Airlines. We're flying over the island of Cuba. And uh, lightning struck the plane. I mean, it sounded like an explosion aboard that plane. The lights went off. The engines quit. The plane started going down. I was scared. People swearing, people cursing, people using the Lord's name in vain. But a good friend, Gerald Wallace, who was a pastor down close to Beaumont, he held her, Jesus! plane leveled out. Why did he holler Jesus? Because that's what was in here. 
I got to the, we landed, and I was walking off, I put my arm around and said, Brother Wallace, I'm sure glad you hollered Jesus. He said, I wasn't the only one who hollered Jesus. I oh, really, who else? He said, you did. Oh. <laughs> so whatever's in your heart, we speak. Romans 10, verse 6 through 8. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, saying, Not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from heaven, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. Where is it? Where is the word? In thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we speak. Speak in faith. How did it get in our heart? From our mouth to our heart. Because your tongue is a pen of a ready writer. When you speak it, it writes up on your heart. Amen. So be careful what you speak. Speak the word of God. It's first in our mouth and in our heart. Proverbs 15 verse 4. There's so many scriptures I can't get to all of them. But just a few more here. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Many people speak perversely. Let's don't be among those. Psalms 107 verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. We need to be talking about what the Lord has done for us. You know, the Bible says they overcame him in Revelation by three things. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their life unto death. That is, they love Jesus more than life itself. They over, one of the things, the blood of the Lamb is very important. Our testimony is also important. So God delivers us from perverse things. John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they have it more abundantly. I like to confess and say, Jesus, thank you that you gave me abundant life. Amen. You didn't just give me life, but you gave me abundant life. Amen. Amen. I like to speak over my family every day. We walk in the favor of God. Some people don't believe in, some people don't believe in favor. They don't believe in favor. They don't believe in grace because that's another word for, for grace. Grace is favor. I'm married to love of favor of God. We walk in the favor of God. Expect good things to happen. Expect the Lord to supply the need. Mark chapter 11, verse 21. And Peter, calling remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered up. See, they'd come by, and there was a fig tree uh, before this, and uh, Jesus uh, looking for figs, and there was none. So he placed a curse upon the fig tree, and they, came, they come by here, and a little later, and he said, It's dried up. And Jesus answering, saith unto him, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. A lot of translation says it like this, Have the faith of God. What is the faith of God? It's creative faith. Creative faith. He spoke and it created. We create things with our words. Notice what he said. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, shall do what? Say unto this mountain. What mountain? Any mountain that may be in your way. Maybe finances, maybe sickness, maybe family problems. But whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast in the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. We won't doubt in the heart for we've been writing upon our heart by speaking. Shall, but shall have, shall believe that those things which he does, which he does what? Shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have what? He shall have whatsoever he saith. What have you been saying? Sickness, disease, poverty, lack. Or have you been saying blessings? Oh, my, I like to pray this prayer. All of my descendants are going to serve Jesus Christ. All of my offspring, every generation until Jesus comes, all of them are going to serve Jesus Christ. Every one of them. All the days of their life, they're going to serve Jesus. I pray that. Amen. God says he'll give us our seed, our children. Amen. Ezekiel 12. 12 and 25 Ezekiel, for I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more prolonged, for in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it, saith the Lord. God says he will perform his word. Jeremiah, 
known as the weeping prophet, but he, he said a lot of good things. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5 to verse 10. The Lord said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before you were born, God knew you. He had a purpose for your life. Everybody. Everybody. God's got a purpose. Until we find that purpose, we'll not be completely fulfilled in life till we find the purpose for our creation. We're first of all created to serve Jesus, to believe in Him. God said, Before you were formed, I, I knew you. Sanctify thee, and I ordained thee a prophet to the nations. Then I said, I, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. I'm a child. He's like a lot of us. All the objections, you know. I can't because of this, that. I'm not strong enough, you know. I'm not mature enough. You can put any number of things there why you can't do what you're supposed to be doing. But notice verse 7. But the Lord said unto me, Say not I'm a child. Don't say I'm a child. Don't say that. But thou shalt go to all that I send thee, Whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with you. God is with you. God is with you always. To deliver you, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put his hand forth. Before this hand touched, what? He touched my mouth. See, I've set this day over the nations, over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, throw down, to build, and to plant. He said, that's why he's born. God said, don't, don't talk that way anymore, Jeremiah. Don't say I'm just a child. Don't, don't, don't say I'm weak. Don't say I can't do this. Don't say this thing is bigger than I am. It may be by yourself, but you're not by yourself. You have God. Jeremiah 1, verse 12. Then the Lord said unto me, Thou shalt thus well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. God says, I will perform my word. It's our part to speak it. God will perform it. Joel 3, verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords, your pruning and spears. Let the weak say what? I am strong. If you feel weak, don't confess weakness. No. I'm strong. How can we say that when you don't feel strong? Because we have God. Greater is he than is me, than he that is in the world. God is with us. So we can, we can speak that. Just a few more scriptures here. <clears throat> Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. My son. Attend to my, my words. Incline the, thine ears to my sin. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. God says his word is life to our flesh. When we speak God's word over and over again, we speak God's word. Psalms 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them out of all their afflictions. I'm going to skip over some things and go on down to the last part here. 2 Kings 4.23. <clears throat> there was a Shumanite woman that had a child that was prophesied to her. that They were childless, but God miraculously gave them a child. The child got sick and died. So she was going to go see the prophet. Her husband said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him? Today is neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, It shall be well. Now the child is laying dead. She goes to the father out in the field who's working in the field. The dead boy laying back there. She said, I'm going to see the prophet. Well, what's wrong? Why are you going to see the prophet? It's not, not time for the feast. She said, All is well. It's going to be okay. So, the prophet sees her coming. He sends his servant, 426 of Second Kings. The prophet says, Run now, I pray thee, to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with the husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. Been some of us, Oh, my Lord, what am I going to do? The child is dead. Graveyard dead. No hope. Why did you speak prophecy to him in the first place? You know, I was childless, and now I got a child, but he's dead. No, she wasn't talking to me. She said, it's all well. It's all good. It's all well. Amen. No wonder the Bible called her a great woman. She's a great woman in Scripture. Not many, not many people call great in the Bible. But this woman is called great. 2 Kings 4, 8. It fell on the day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where there was a great woman, she constrained him to eat bread 
And so it was, as often he passed by, he turned it through their tea bread. She was a great woman. Why? When things were the darkest, she said, it's okay. It's well. It's well. What happened to that dead boy? God brought him back to life. Because she, she held on to her profession. Husband said, why are you going to go? It's okay. Everything's all right. Servant comes. What's wrong? You're in a hurry. What about your husband? What about the, your boy? It's well. It is well. It is well. It's okay. Held on to our confession. She, she was called a great woman. You'll be great for God if you'll just keep holding on to what God's given you. Hold on to this word. Keep saying it. Keep believing it. Keep confessing it. Praise God.